let's hit the goaltending. Um, I'll start with Sam Erson. Uh, I think he's played better than his numbers, but his num like they're bad. His numbers are horrendous. Yeah, they're real bad. So like better than that is still pretty bad. Yeah. What's he at eight seventy seven? Um, yeah, his numbers are he's Erson's eight seventy two save percentage is fifty second out of seventy goalies. Yeah, that's rough. Um, that's that's absolutely horrendous. And then you look at the guys behind him. Even worse, uh, Kolasov eight thirty three is sixty fifth out of seventy. That's one game, but it's all goalies who've like taken a shot. It's everyone I included because okay. he played one game. Because why not? And Fedotov is eight twenty one, sixty seventh out of seventy. Overall, I'm, I'm surprised he's not last. I can't believe he's. Uh, Georgiev, Georgiev is actually worse. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. That's I think wild. he's sixty eighth. Um, and like he's their starter. <laughs> uh, Five on five team save percentage, 851. If you're wondering if anyone's worse than them, they're not. It's the worst save percentage in the league. Other things on this team, as we just went through, right. are real bad. It's not just the goalies. But when you are getting legitimately the worst goaltending in the league every single night, you have no chance of winning, and they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Like That's what it's come down to is yeah. we always say, like, yeah, you need – depth and you need your 1c and you need a top pair defense the thing that masks so many things is goaltending and when it has this level of impact on your game where it's not even yeah we're getting by they're average they're a little below average no they're horrendous you can't win and they don't yeah but i, I do think you're you're letting the defense off the hook a bit because oh, look like you goal- don't have the worst save percentage yeah. without giving up that many scoring chances. The goalies chances. have not been good. That is true. But I do think that if the defense tightens up a bit, if the team defense tightens up a bit, the goalies, even if they're not actually playing any better in terms of true talent level, their numbers are going to get better just because the defense is not giving up breakaways all the time and not giving up super high quality chances. Like the one thing that they have struggled mightily at this season, and I truly, I don't know if it's just fluky or if there's something that teams have recognized with the way that they tend to do defensive zone coverages, they are giving up so many goals that are redirections in the slot. Yes. And those are goals. I can't, I can't bring myself to blame a goalie for that. I really, I really can't. Those are real, real tough ones to stop. And it just seems like they're not covering those guys. Like there've been like the one off the shin pad last night. There was like the shoulder goal a couple of games ago. And it's like, yeah, that's just kind of weird. But it's happening every single game. Yeah. And, and, and some of them aren't fluky. Some no, of them are really nice. Some of them are attempt, like they're yeah. actually trying to do it. Yeah. Uh, like it's it's definitely an issue where I, like maybe the zone defense and the collapsing in. It's like, well, guess what? There's going to be traffic. There is just going to be traffic because we're trying I, to block shots. I just think it's the I overall know. sloppiness. Yeah. I really do. I, but, but I, but I yes. just I've noticed a lot of those goals happening. And look. Small sample, yes, but the season is a small sample right now. They're giving up a lot of those goals, and those are goals I have trouble pinning on the goalies. So, yeah. No, I, the goalies have not been good. But an 851 save percentage at 5-on-5 five five is like, well, why? Yeah. Because you're giving up way too many high danger chances, and yeah. you're giving up way too much in those areas. They have to figure that stuff out. And just like the um, the broken the broken stick goal last night where the – I guess maybe Kolosov just had trouble tracking it as it moved so slowly. It was a fluky play. It was so fluky. Someone should have recognized that, like, all you got to do is put your stick out and deflect it, but just no one did. But, again, there's a guy on the back door completely unmarked. And, like, these things are just happening so often that it's – while, again, goalies suck, um, so too has the defense. And when the defense is this bad, again, they're not – getting those turnover opportunities that led to all those rush chances last year. All of this is combining into like, okay, we can't get a save (laughs) when we do get a save. No one clears the rebounds. So someone's in front to put it like it's all just combining to how can we ever score if the puck never gets like three of us going in the same direction at the same time. And it's been ugly, but the Kolasov Fedotov situation itself Right. right now, they're carrying three goalies. Which they can. And because Cam York is Cam on York's IR, out. and they sent Jet Luchenko. Back. And, yeah. So they have the space. So they can do it. Honestly, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm cool um, with it. Whatever. I kind of thought coming into this year, like, 
all right, we were going to have Ersin and Fedotov before the Kolosov situation really unfolded. Mm-hmm. I was like, maybe bring in a vet so you have some stability. If, like, Ersin gets hurt, you don't have to put Fedotov in for two straight weeks, and right. then he gets killed, and we're in the situation we were in last year all over again mm-hmm. with an even worse goalie or a guy who's never played in North America before. But now with Kolosov, it's like, well, if we're going to lose him, Let's try to keep him. Yeah. I have no problem with him with carrying three right now. It's not ideal most times, but considering what this team is, what's why not? Well, and at the very least, based on based on what I saw from Col- from Kolosov in that game, but also what I saw from him in preseason, I don't know if he's good. I truly don't. But I know watching him, I think there's a more there's a path that you can envision where he is good yes. in a way that there hasn't been when you watch Ivan Fedotov. No, that's the um like he there, it's plausible when I watch Colossus, I'll be like, yeah, he could get you like a 900 save percentage. Yeah, I could see that. Exactly. Whereas I watch Fedotov, I'm like, and, and literally one of our commenters said this, and it's fair. Like, it feels like every save he gets, he lucked into. It's luck. Yeah. yeah. Like, just be bigger, dude. It, I don't know. It, it just to, uh, it, it looks so bad. It's so, Kolosov at least looked good most of the game. Yeah, like uh, it, it seems like Kolosov just needs like the reps and experience that go along with a developing player, and that makes sense. He's what twenty two years old. Right. Like goalies typically don't play at this age yeah. in the NHL. Yeah. He just needs to get better, as is the natural progression he's, for he's most to be more consistent for, for with, most, his, yeah. with his reads, <laughs> with his positioning. Like the goal he gives, he gives up to to Caulfield. Like that is a bad goal. But that is a bad goal that seemingly you can fix that problem pretty quickly with some reps. We, I agreed with you last night that that's just a goal you can't give up. Also, Cole Caulfield's a goal scorer. True. That's a goal scorer's goal. It's a goal scorer's like, goal. If you give that goal Fair. up to Ryan Paling, yeah, man, that's unforgivable. Mm. You need to make that stop nine and a half times out of ten. Yeah. But sometimes a gifted goal scorer gets one like that. Away. Yeah. Like Fair. too much time and space. He had way too much time to pick his spot. But yeah, like. Seal the post, man. That's mm-hmm. first day stuff. Yeah. But it's just like he needs to learn that. You watch Fedotov and go, is he like the emergency guy? Is he someone who doesn't actually know what he's doing? And he showed up with pads, so he had to play him? Like the path for him is I don't know, but he needs a lot of work. Yeah. I don't know how he gets there. And right now, Kolosov, it's like, yeah, man, he just needs to get older. Especially when you're that, <laughs> when you're 27. That's the, what's and, the... And you've already thrived doing it your way yeah. in probably the second best professional league in the world. I don't know how easy it is for you to make dramatic adjustments to your game, which is what I think he probably has to make if he wants to be an NHL caliber goalie. Now, it would be real cool if he could do it. Sure. And maybe, you know, you have him do remedial work with Kim Dillaball get a translator in here so you can just bounce ideas off each other they got a they have that developmental coach uh, that they hired from the khl it's not a goalie expert but he is a hockey expert maybe he could function there and you just have him work with kim dillaball for two straight weeks maybe that does it but the version of ivan odov we've seen so far like i don't see a path where that goalie without dramatic overhaul of his style can can thrive in the nhl maybe he can get to the point where he's an 880 save percentage goalie, but like you don't want that guy on your team either. Is there, it's probably not going to happen yet. Can you see a world where he's in the AHL, Fedotov? I think everything's on the table. Now, obviously in this situation, you're going to have to talk with him. You're going to have to talk with his camp, but you know, maybe there's a world where if he sits for a while, maybe you give him a conditioning stint in the AHL. You know, and then you work on you work it that way, where it's like we're not really sending you down; we're giving you a chance to work on the things that, you, that you've been learning over the last couple of weeks under Dillable, and you can work on those things in a environment where there aren't Cole Caulfields and you know Stephen Stamkos is shooting the puck at you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like maybe that is some way some way they could sell it to him. Look, if they want it to, they could send him down because there's no one that is claiming it. No, however. You have to remember that there are people involved in this, too. This guy came over from Russia. I don't know if they would be willing to do that just because he's been bad. I feel like that would have to, or at least it should. It would have to come after the two sides have had a conversation about what the right way to go is. (laughs) 
Y'all silly like the mayor. 